Twisted Cyclone, one of the shortest RMC hybrid coasters in both height and duration. Many people love this ride, and many people love to hate it. Let's get to the bottom of it. What's up guys, Dr. Coaster here and welcome back to another video on the channel, where today we'll be reviewing Twisted Cyclone, an RMC hybrid coaster located at Six Flags Over Georgia. Before we wave turn our way into the intro, if you haven't already, then be sure to drop the video a like, as it helps me fight the YouTube algorithm. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel as well for more roller coaster and theme park content, just like this. Twisted Cyclone opened to the public on May 25th, 2018, as the 10th hybrid coaster to be built by Rocky Mountain Construction. It opened the same year as Twisted Timbers and Steel Vengeance. In fact, it opened later in the same month as Steel Vengeance, so it definitely got overlooked just a little bit. Twisted Timbers and Steel Vengeance are both considered to be the top tier of iBox coasters that RMC has ever cooked up. So Twisted Cyclone had a lot to live up to from the jump. Now that I think about it, RMC must have been running around like a bunch of crazed madmen during the 2017-18 offseason getting all three of these rides ready. Up first, let's talk stats. Opening as the 16th roller coaster to ever operate at Six Legs Over Georgia, Twisted Cyclone will bring the park's diverse operating lineup to a total of 11. Twisted Cyclone stands at a height of 100 feet tall and reaches the top speed of 50 miles per hour. I'm still not quite sure how RMC math works, but they managed to cram this coaster in with only 2,400 feet of track, a full thousand less than Air Force One. Yet it maintains a torrid pace throughout the entire ride. As far as theming goes, Twisted Cyclone doesn't offer a ton, albeit it is more than most Six Flags coasters up to that point. Twisted, as the name suggests, refers to the ride's overhaul from its previous form, Georgia Cyclone. Many RMC conversions bear either this name or something similar to it like iron or steel. That list goes on, and if you're curious what it looks like, feel free to pause the screen here and check it out. As I just mentioned, Cyclone is also a nod to the ride's previous form, Georgia Cyclone, a mirror image of the classic Coney Island Cyclone located at Luna Park on Coney Island. I only rode this coaster once, and it was way back in either the 4th or 5th grade nearly 15 years ago. Long before my fascination with roller coasters, and in fact, it was an awful experience for me overall, because of the airtime it provided. I had no concept of what zero G's were at the time, so child me legitimately thought I was about to fly out of the train. I became an enthusiast in 2019, so I just missed out getting to ride this coaster again. But from what I was told, it had gotten pretty rough and I doubt I would have liked it very much. Throughout the queue and around the coaster and station themselves, you'll notice news articles about a pending storm as well as debris lying around. And now that we got the minimalistic theming out of the way, that brings us to Twisted Cyclone's layout. As you drop out of the station, you'll experience a couple of fun off-axis hills that to date are the most fun out of any of the RMCs that I've ridden. I've ridden Iron Gwazi, Lightning Rod, Steel Vengeance, and Twisted Cyclone, and I've always appreciated when a coaster starts off before the lift hill, and RMC certainly doesn't hold back with this one. You'll then ascend the lift hill while you encounter more signs of the coming cyclone, and at the top, you're encouraged to ride it out which is actually the slogan for the ride. I tend to find a lot of ride slogans corny and forced, but this is a good one, it really fits. All right, now it's time for the first drop. Once you reach the top of the 100 foot lift hill, you'll get yonked down to ground level at a 75 degree angle. I don't know what it is about this drop, but it feels far steeper than it actually is, especially when ridden in the back row. You get absolutely hurled over the top there with what is some of the strongest ejector airtime around. It's a real gut punch to start off the ride, but you better catch your breath quickly because remember how I mentioned the torrid pace that this ride moves at? Yeah, well, it's begun. Immediately out of the drop, you're gonna fly back up in the world's first reverse Cobra roll, which is essentially made up of two modified ZRG rolls on either side of it. You're gonna fly up into what RCDB has listed as a step up underflip before traversing a bank turn. I don't really care about the name, but that's what it's called. Anyway, this isn't too crazy quite yet, but the exit out of this reverse cobra roll is wild. Looking back now following the opening of Iron Gwazi, this barrel roll down to ground level is definitely a predecessor of sorts for the death roll. Sure, it is definitely not on the same scale, but coming from somebody who has ridden both of them now, 
this element provides a very similar sensation. Coming out of this drop, and now it's time for the most iconic element on the entire ride, the wave turn. As you approach Twisted Cyclone from either side, this is the element that welcomes you to the ride. Situated right in front of the lift hill, this wave turn provides some of the most unique airtime that you will find on any coaster. The wave turn on Twisted Cyclone was one of the first in the world following in the footsteps of Outlaw Run and Lightning Rod, both RMC coasters created just a few years prior. This element by RMC has actually inspired a recent trend across multiple manufacturers, including B&M and Intamin. Recent, notable additions of wave turns on coasters include Iron Gwazi, another RMC, Velocicoaster and Pantheon, both Intamins, and Orion, a B&M Giga Coaster. If there's one thing that Twisted Cyclone contributed to the coaster scene, the wave turn is definitely it. Due to this coaster's pacing, you blow through the wave turn quickly, getting a solid pop of lateral airtime in the process, after which you drop back down towards the ground before climbing up into the second turnaround on the ride. This turnaround is relatively tame, you will get a little bit of airtime after a nice pop of ejector heading into it. And while this turnaround might be a little tame, the next element is anything but. This is the ejector death hill, or that's at least what I'm going to call it, barring the turn from Zip and Pippin. Despite its size, the element provides possibly the most intense airtime on Twisted Cyclone, and definitely the most unexpected. This drop sneaks up on you out of nowhere if you're not expecting it, and it just might be the best element on the ride. Before you can catch your breath after the ejector hill, Twisted Cyclone whips you through the last inversion on the ride, a classic, patented 0G roll from RMC. There's nothing too much to talk about here, if you've experienced one of these 0G rolls before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll get some solid hang time and whip as you traverse this element as you go upside down one last time. To wrap up the ride, Twisted Cyclone gives you one last taste of some off-axis hills before a few solid pops into the final breaks. This wouldn't seem like much on paper, but Twisted Cyclone doesn't lose an ounce of its speed when it's running well. The final breaks definitely do come up quick, but Twisted Cyclone still manages to pack a massive punch with this layout. Before giving my final rating, I want to cover a few more details of the ride that I have had experience with many times. First off, while I said that this ride packs a punch, I can't help but thinking every time I hit the brakes, what this coaster could have done with the third lap. There's also the possibility that the pacing would have suffered significantly, as I know this is a criticism that many have of Wicked Cyclone up at Six Flags New England. I personally haven't ridden that one yet, but if Six Flags had just spent a few more dollars here, they could have added a few feet to Twisted Cyclone's height to compensate for just that. Twisted Cyclone could have easily been a top 5 RMC, but Six Flags definitely cut some corners here. That, and I have to mention the operations. Unfortunately, these are some of the slowest I have ever seen, and as a result, Twisted Cyclone is typically a one and done type of ride for me when I'm at the park, even though I've got it in my top two. During one of my last visits to the park, I got a 10 minute cycle on Twisted Cyclone. And yes, I timed it. From the time that I stepped through the gate to the time that I stepped out of the train, 10 minutes had passed. I set on a brake run for what was an easy five minutes, if not more. I can't punish the ride itself too much for this, but I've got to consider it with my overall score because of how prevalent it has been and how awfully it impacts their overall ride experience. Twisted Cyclone has been running well lately, but it has a tendency to be pretty slow at times. Regardless, when this coaster is running at its best, it is still a world-class ride. RMC did everything they could with the budget that Six Flags gave them, and they helped innovate many new attractions through the creation of Twisted Cyclone. With all of that said, I am giving Twisted Cyclone a 9 out of 10. This was a tough one to score considering the scope of everything I just talked about and the arrival of Air Force One in the near future, but this is still a solid ride and I'm happy to have it at one of my home parks. Thank you all for watching. That'll wrap up my review of Twisted Cyclone. Short, but sweet, just like the coaster itself. Have you ridden Twisted Cyclone? Let me know in the comments below, as well as what you thought of it and how it compared to other RMCs. If you haven't already, be sure to drop the video a like and subscribe to the channel as well for more roller coaster and theme park content just like this. If you want to follow me on Instagram as well, then you can find me there at Dr. Underscore Coaster. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.